This time on IFAF. I don't falls and foul. Bark, bark. Feathers? Yeah. <laughs> the secret ingredient is crime. You basically did the equivalent of when you're feeling sad, going to a mirror and watching yourself cry. Just wallowed in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wallowed in my own <laughs> filth. Now I have to worry about him running in to jailbreak his girlfriend. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, can't wait to show you the baseballism tea. I can't believe it got here already. That was... It was fast. It was fast. Yeah. Girl Scout cookies are here, especially if you've got a connection, or you might have to wait till the 23rd. We'll explain why. We'll talk about this wonderful El Nino weather we're having, Valentine's Day, a great school lunch project that you can contribute to, our favorite Super Bowl ad, and what's going on with the old Golden China restaurant that looks like it's just been beat to hell. Torn asunder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good news, sports fans. I've decided to start calling everybody sports fans. <laughs> also, Batman the Chicken has been found. Did you see this happen this no. week? Last week? Um, somebody on the numbered streets, I think 11th Street, uh -huh. lost a uh, chicken. Her name is Batman. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm assuming that a little boy named her. Uh, probably. Yeah. It's a blitz, so it looks like a black chicken. <laughs> and um, there's a picture of it, like, in somebody's window. <laughs> He's just looking in the window, <laughs> thinking chicken thoughts. Oh, bark, wait, bark, looking. Bark. So the chicken is outside looking into yeah. the house's window? Yeah. Like, it's one of those... If you're cold, they're cold, let them in photos. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so was it like a, a door? Like a glass door that it, it was, it was like in? a It was like a bay window. Oh, okay, like funny. Like a primary living room oh, window. Oh, okay. Poor Batman. Aw, that's sad. Do they? Well, they're little chicken if you have no feathers. They've got to be cold. What are the rules? I forget the rules. Are urban chickens allowed in Idaho Falls proper? I guess so. I'm pretty sure that they are. Because okay. I remember having neighbors with chickens when I lived in Idaho Falls proper. Okay. And and I, I I knew they changed the rule like 10 years ago or something, but I just don't see, for as many houses as I see, I just don't see a lot of chicken coops. Right, right. I guess. Well, and to be fair, I kind of get it because they are a lot of upkeep. They're a lot of work and they don't necessarily produce all that many eggs. Um. I really tried to talk my Mexican into letting us get chickens, and he refused. And now I'm kind of glad because then I would have had to get rid of them. But I see a lot of friends that I have, so I don't want to offend any of them. But uh, a lot of friends that I have have birds, mm -hmm. pets of some kind. But that just seems, and maybe we could Google it, mm -hmm. it seems to be the most unsanitary pet you could possibly have. Yeah. <laughs> like with all the feathers and dander and... I mean, the feathers aren't so bad. Yikes. You know, and they don't really have that much dander, especially compared to like cats and dogs. Uh-huh. You know, but, um, you know, there is the poop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you let them fly around the house, like, as <laughs> I understand it, birds don't have like sphincters. Yeah, they have cloacas. So they just go anywhere. Like I mean, it just sort of falls out of them. I think they can hold it. They just choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just assholes. Yeah. Yeah. That they're means... assholes without assholes. <laughs> that means two things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And they're assholes with cloacas. <laughs> <laughs> well, Batman, I'm it was like a half day long saga. Somebody mm. posted a picture of their missing chicken and then a couple other people. Oh, we found it. It's on 10th Street or whatever. But Hilarious. I don't know. And also, I'm so glad that, Bama, that Batman got home. Yeah. Hopefully to her Robin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> In the spring, they'll have these giant Robin egg blue chicken eggs. There we go. Could yeah. that happen? That couldn't happen, no. right? <laughs> right. Okay. That'd be cool, though. And you've had fresh chicken eggs, right? Oh, yeah. Like I'm sure I have. Yeah, where the... Um, the yolks are like this amazing orange color instead of just yeah, yellow. Yeah, so that yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's a whole Simpsons episode on that where really Homer and Bart steal Flanders chicken eggs. Of course, they're stealing from Flanders, and and it's they're the, so mean to him. <laughs> it's the crime that tastes so good. They determine <laughs> <laughs> the secret ingredient is crime. Honestly, yeah, I definitely I've picked asparagus on property who like I don't know who exactly owned it. I thought it was everyone's communal property because of by some railroad tracks, but maybe it wasn't. Ah. And it sure did taste good. 
<laughs> wild asparagus that does grow around here, doesn't it? Uh huh. Oh yeah. I wonder if people have like wa- secret wild asparagus patches, like they have huckleberry patches. Right, right. Or like fishing holes. Or like morel mushroom patches that you just don't Ooh. tell anybody about. That'd be nice. I'd yeah. love a little mushroom patch. Okay, a couple of uh, follow-ups. Let's start with my baseballism shirt came yes, in. Yes, I'm so excited about this. It came so quickly, too. Yeah, I was kind of shocked. Do you remember this from last week? There's the angry potato coming at you. I hope He's I'm so holding mad. this up right. I do He's like so the mad. little wheat hanging out of his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like chewing on wheat. Yeah. Chewing on a... Like they do in, I suppose, Field of Dreams or something, right? I know I've seen that somewhere. Yeah. Maybe on an actual Major League Baseball game or in a cartoon. I mean, I have to assume that that's because there's nothing else to chew on, you know? Like they've worked their way through their uh, big league chew. Right. Their jaw. (laughs) Yeah. And look at this. It's like it's an actual Baseballisms t-shirt. I figured this was one graphic designer just having some fun. Right. But I think this is a legit outfit. Yeah. Um, and then the back says, U.S. number one, Idaho Taters, 100 pounds, product of USA, uh, packed and shipped by Baseballism, Inc. So I think to sort of mimic, you know, we do the Marilyn Monroe potato sack right. dress, mm-hmm. T on tetontshirts.com. Right. And uh, yeah, a really quality garment that I cannot wait to wear. Yeah. Oh, and props again to my good buddy, Craig Flopdoodle on Instagram. Oh, yeah. He's, I looked him up. He's Craig Carson on WKLH, 3 to 7 p.m. afternoons at WKLH in Milwaukee. You're telling me his real name isn't Flop Doodle? <laughs> it's not. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> I feel so betrayed. And I also can't wait to wear Greg Hale's Idaho Falls A's shirt. I'm so excited to see that one. Yeah, so I'm getting together with him, I think, tomorrow. <clears throat> and uh, and he said, so I said, dude, what's your deal? Like, um, because I know I love making these vintage designs and parody designs, mm-hmm. and I think I've sold a handful of them at tetontshirts.com. Yeah. And he's like, no, I just make them for myself to wear. He said, in fact, you're the only other person, you and I. So he does the design, then he prints the shirt. Uh-huh. He said, you and I are the only two people who will have this shirt. That's so cool, though. <laughs> and he said it makes us Eskimo brothers, so I've got to go look that up. <laughs> I'm not and sure that's what that. That's not how I've heard that phrase used. Oh, what do you think Eskimo Brothers means? Um, <laughs> I've heard it used in the sense that, like, uh, you've been with the same person. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, then we've got to Google. There's a follow up for next yeah. week. We'll, yeah. We'll figure that out. We'll get on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> We're cool and hip. We know how to find the memes. Anyway, I love <laughs> that he's got the passion for not just vintage Idaho Falls, but um, t shirt design. Yeah. And and I guess I didn't realize this because it's been the Chuckers for 20 years, I think. The longest. The Idaho Falls Chuckers, yeah, have been the Chuckers since 04, but I forget that they were the Braves mm-hmm. for a couple of periods. The Gems, the Eagles, the Angels. Which I like the Gems the best. The Russets, the A's, and they were only the Gems for one year. I think Which 1992. Which because we're at the Gem State. Yeah. Like, of all of the ones that they should be, it should be that. Like, I've never seen a Chucker. Here in Idaho, and have I, you? I don't, not that I realize. Yeah, I no. know I've seen a sandpiper. Sure, you yeah. You see those, not all the time, but. I've seen them pretty commonly. Pretty frequently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen sandpipers or seagulls more than I've seen chuckers. Right. Why are they the, ch- I mean, I guess chuckers are cute though, like there the is actual a, bird. <laughs> there's a chucker bird at uh, Cabela's, but I think they've spelled the label wrong. Yeah, Didn't they we- spelled it like Someone who chucks versus yeah, the bird chuckers. Yeah. yeah. Oopsies. Yeah, it's cool. Don't know if they fixed that yet. Haven't been in. I I just don't. You might find this hard to believe, Carl, but I don't really go into Cabela's a lot. <laughs> you know, that does shock me. You yeah. just seem like such a rugged outdoorsman. A snowshoeing, <laughs> white water rafting, mm-hmm. fishing, hunting, yeah. biathlon doing kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I do, I I do love that store, and I it is love that fun. I love that Idaho Falls has a Cabela's, right? Because, and we've talked about this before, where businesses will go into a market and do some research to determine the viability of that business in that market, right? And the thing about Idaho Falls is, if we were just this size town out in the middle of nowhere, don't laugh yet. Um, 
we probably wouldn't get half the stuff we have. Mm-hmm. The reason we get some of the stuff we've got here, shops like Cabela's, mm-hmm. is because of all the bedroom communities that surround us. Our geography right. is never going to change. Mm-hmm. So we've got people from Jackson coming in mm-hmm. and Pocatello and Salmon and all these, you know, Arco, all these neighboring towns. We're the big town to them. In fact, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself when I say I once talked to the mayor of Idaho Falls and he claimed that the population of our city doubles on the weekends. Wild to me. But honestly, considering the traffic, I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. Consider- yeah. If you've ever been to a Sam's Club on a Saturday, Ugh. you know that's true. Harrowing. <laughs> yeah. Just harrowing. I'm so sick of... You know, I will say that was one thing I really liked about my retail job was that one of my days off was on the weekday. Ah. And so there was no one out. I could go out. I could get stuff done so fast. Yeah. I could have all of my errands done in like an hour and a half. Now it takes me like three Because there are so many schmoes in front of me. And I don't know what I was thinking. I went shopping um, the day of the Super Bowl and uh, to pick us up some snackies. We did a real low-key Super Bowl party. Well, to be fair, we weren't expecting to have to. Right. So my my parents usually throw a big Super Bowl party. This year they didn't because everyone in their household had COVID. And I cannot leave, like, I can't miss any other days. Like, I've got so much to do. I can't be down and out. So I was like, all right, you guys stay there, which I was already so sad about because my mom makes these little smokies that'll knock your socks off. Does she use the, um, wait a minute, what's the recipe? Half barbecue sauce, half grape jelly? No. Oh. She does brown sugar, baby, and it's so good. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, um, so she... You know, she didn't do those this year. I was planning on going to their house for Super Bowl all week long. And then they're like, hey, we have COVID. Sorry. So we couldn't. And so I was like, oh, okay. well, you know, maybe we can hang out with one of my friends or something or go to their Super Bowl party. And then my friend ended up getting, uh, I think, the uh, strep throat. That's what it was. She got strep. And so we couldn't go over there. So we had to throw together our own little two-person Super Bowl party on a whim. (laughs) It was kind of bizarrely pathetic, you know? Right. I almost felt like I didn't want to run into anybody I knew, and I never do at Winco. It's the weirdest thing. Which is so nice. Everybody I know shops at Winco, and Mm -hmm. I've never seen any of them there. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just when I go, but I got a cheese ball the size of my fist. Oh, and it was so good, too. <laughs> it was just a teeny little path. And I got mm-hmm. one box of crackers, mm-hmm. exactly 12 shrimp, Yeah. <laughs> one lemon, Didn't some cocktail more. <laughs> sauce. It was just, if anybody had seen me there, they'd be like, oh, poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, they think that you were partying alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will say that we did have a mini ca- a mini crock pot full of queso. And I think that is the one thing that Tostitos every Super Bowl queso. party has to have, you know? Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't feel too pathetic. Oh, yeah. We had the dippins and yeah. everything. The shrimp were great. Oh, yeah. And you made those what wings else? that were great. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We did frozen wings. And we it was the maiden voyage of your brand new virgin air fryer. Yes. With the double barrels. Oh, that's so oh. hot. Oh, man. I know. What I brand know. is it? Oh. Whatever it is, it's good. It might be Kenmore. I almost like it, almost like it better than my Ninja 5-in-1. I mean, it's pretty badass. I really, I really yeah. like my air fryer. I need to use it more. And and frozen wings are so easy in an air fryer. Like, mm-hmm. I think the default for most air fryers is 390 or 400. Mm-hmm. You take the frozen wings. Take these frozen <laughs> wings. <laughs> How about that new E Trade Baby commercial in the Super Bowl? Oh, it was so gross! I hated it. <laughs> I just it I hate, still freaks I don't me out. Like talking, ba- they are not supposed to talk like that, and it's weird and uncanny, and it's not cool. And also, screw you, E Trade. Right. That was one of those one of those companies I had to deal with after the fact, after a short sale of my home in Milwaukee in mm-hmm. 08, That like came along, and then you know, it just nothing pisses me off more than seeing those people advertise E Trade and Wells. Fargo. I hear that stuff all the time. Right. Wells Fargo has donated over 60 million. Yeah. Because you got a bailout from the government after royally f***ing us. Right. Honestly, it makes me so... I'll try to tone it down. (laughs) It's fair. It's fair. Um, You know, it just bothers me that they can just like sell your debt. 
without consulting you. So weird. You don't have to agree to anything. You never did business with the company. Right. Yeah. Like, I chose this person specifically to go into debt with because <laughs> I liked them as a company. I don't know who you are. Right. Why do you get to control my debt? How right. dare you? Ew. Hate it. Like, there should be <laughs> some kind of rule against that. So, you know? where, where were we? Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, E-Trade Babies, you, okay, wait. Broken Wings. It's so easy to make frozen wings in the air fryer because you just do them for 10 minutes, take them out, put them in a bunch of olive oil and seasoning, stick them back in for 10 minutes. Very good. Yum. And also, I'm sorry, I got to go one step further down go. this tangent. And here, okay. <laughs> That's imagine, what we do. Imagine if you borrow 20 bucks from your friend Jim and like... Three weeks later, your friend John comes up to you and he's like, hey, uh, you owe me 20 bucks. I'm sorry, what? Well, you know, I I bought the the money from Jim, so you owe me 20 bucks. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It seems like there's a Seinfeld or a Friends episode like that where it's like somebody owed somebody some money, but then some somebody else, um, th- they owed money to somebody else, so they right. gave them the money, so then they had to pay the money to a different person. It, it does get weird. Right, yeah. Other favorite Super Bowl commercials, the Pluto TV couch potato commercial. Yeah, you dug that. That was so Idaho. It's so Idaho. <laughs> it was so great. Yeah. We grow couch potatoes. And in fact, I mean, I wonder if, I mean, can we Google Pluto TV couch potato costume? Because I oh. would I would go as that at Halloween. That's funny. I like that. It seems A, warm, and B, able to accommodate my newly fat belly. <laughs> That I've got. And then there was... Is it because you've been a couch potato? Yes. <laughs> Mostly Happens. sedentary all winter long. And we'll get to that. <laughs> the reason I'm putting the word winter in finger quotes. Why? Well, but, right. Not why. It has not been a very white winter. It hasn't. But the <laughs> other one were the, the, the Jesus commercial commercials were pretty memorable to me, too. Those ones took me by surprise. I wasn't really expecting them. And also... I'm going to be a jerk and just point out, those are not cheap commercials to buy. They bought several of them. You could have spent the $20 million on feeding the homeless. Yeah. Yeah. You could like, have given it some of that to the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. <laughs> right. Like, they're, I feel like that money could have been spent better. Yeah. At least one. Like, here's the thing. You don't need two commercials in the Super Bowl. One is enough. And they did four? Yeah. Six? I don't they know. Did, too many is it, what they did. It seemed like I saw quite a few. Yeah. And um, but I did like the one, and I immediately got it. You know, there's the story in the Bible of Jesus washing mm-hmm. somebody's feet. Yes. Mm-hmm. And does he use his hair to dry off the feet, or did no, I make that part up? No. So there's there is a story where a woman washes Jesus's feet and uses her hair to oh. to clean them. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. They start washing feet, and I immediately got it, and it really touched me emotionally. I thought that was just fantastic. Yeah. You know, I think it's um, religion sort of pumps you up and imbues you with the spirit, and so it's easy as humans to get an ego, but the whole message of that ad was stay humble. Right. Be a servant. Don't, Don't judge others. Wash their feet. And I thought that was great. That is great. So it's funny that you say that, though, because there was this uh, Twitter or tweet. I saw this tweet. There was an X. There was an X. (laughs) Not my X, just an X (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that posted something like every time I went to church and we sang, I felt like I was feeling the spirit. And that's how I like, that's what made me believe that God was real. And then I went to a One Direction concert and then I realized that I really just liked live music. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, yeah. like, yeah. I kind of get it. Yeah. Like, there have definitely been times when, like, I've been in big social events where I felt what I would have called the spirit back in the day. And I'm like, oh, it's just that I'm feeling all the energy from the people around me. Yes. Yeah. So when I was a kid, uh, I went to church from, let's say, the age of seven to the age of 17. So for a mm-hmm. good 10 years there, I was a good church going kid. Mm-hmm. And, and not just church going, but I think I mentioned I went to a parochial school. So mm-hmm. I went to ch- I went to church school. We had an hour of Bible every day, mm-hmm. hour of chapel, I think they called it. And then I would go to Wednesday night youth group, Sunday morning, and Sunday night services. Mm-hmm. A lot of church packed That's into a lot ten of years. Church. But we were uh, 
My stepdad was from Mobile, Alabama, so we were state and stately hellfire and brimstone Baptists. Thank you very much. <laughs> for the first few years, probably for seven years. Mm -hmm. But somehow my mom got under my stepdad's craw <laughs> and we ended up going to like, um, it's not called evangelical. What's it called? Non-denominational? Um, well, no, it was... It may have been non-denominational, but it was where you're, you ever heard of speaking in tongues? Yes. Uh-huh. It was this, um, it was a very emotionally driven service. Right. And people would cry out and shout out mm -hmm. and, and raise their hands and do, I don't know, interesting body movements and start speaking in languages that uh, weren't languages. Which would be the best church if you're ADHD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot going on there. Yeah. But uh, like something interactive like that, perfect. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I remember going as a kid, well, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because in Baptist church, you just sit there and listen to the preacher. Right. And yeah. at this church, I'll, maybe I'll remember the word for it, but um, <laughs> at this church, it was totally different. Mm hmm. I mean, sort of like, uh, you know, they do in the South, you know, yeah, uh -huh. preacher says something and you better be there with an amen. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word too, and I can't. Yeah. It's not Protestant. Should we, let's take a minute and Google it. Okay. Oh, I don't have my Here, fancy I've got it. Google machine. Okay. I do. Charismatic? Nation. Charismatic. Charismatic church. That's okay. what it was. Okay. Quite a difference. <laughs> yeah. You know, the one nice thing about those is you'll never fall asleep during it. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I think they had a live band, too, and that was mm -hmm. back when live bands in a church were brand new, at least to me. Right, right. But it was sort of interesting to have that experience and realize, oh, people worship differently. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about these Jesus commercials in the Super Bowl was they sort of pulled back 20,000 feet. Right. And said, okay, people, let's just love each other. Let's serve each other. Let's honor mm -hmm. each other. All the world's greatest religions agree on one thing, and that's the golden rule. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have done to yourself. One last follow-up. The baby on board yield sign that was typically suction cupped to the rear window of cars. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, we talked about this last week, and you mentioned, hey, I think the main purpose of those signs were for medical professionals, EMTs, mm -hmm. in the event of a car accident. Mm-hmm to realize that there was a baby in. And I just wanted to clear that up. Um, according to the company, it's intended to be placed in the back window to caution other drivers that an infant is traveling in the automobile. Ding dong, I was wrong. <laughs> well, the, but then it says in the next paragraph, the sign may also be intended to, as a warning to emergency personnel in case of emergency, as there may be a baby in the vehicle. However, according to the company, safety first... That wasn't the intended purpose. Right. And here's the only reason I was so steadfast on that point last week, Carly, is I was there. I was <laughs> there in the 80s. I remember when they came along. Right. I get that. So I lived that history. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to see revisionist history now. Like when the kids glom onto a piece of something that happened mm -hmm. and they want to make it something it wasn't. Okay, for example, in the 80s, there was a big 50s craze. Right. You know, we talk about fashion being on a 25-year cycle-ish. Mm -hmm. So Back to the Future. Right. That movie was all a tribute to the 50s. Uh-huh. And now- Well, and I mean, even look at the original It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it versus the new one. Yeah. And now, um, and Stand By Me, another another- Mm -hmm. Hot Hollywood 80s film by Stephen King that, that focused on the, the 50s. 50s yeah. yeah. Good point. Now, in 2024, the kids that weren't even born in the 90s are having like 90s parties. Yeah. And which they're is getting so it, upsetting. you know, kind of wrong. <laughs> yeah. They're getting the colors kind of wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's way cuter when they're doing it now with like yeah. their better fashion sense than we ever had. Right. Than it was back then. And also I'm seeing a shocking lack of those like little Chinese tops that everyone wore back then. Oh, okay. Do you remember those? The Gwen Stefani ones? Yeah. like Free little... Harajuku girls. Yes. But more, like... no, more no doubt. Right. Like they have like the little mock tech, the, not mock techs, mock necks and like the weird little um, toggle buttons, you know, but they're like yeah. satin and they've got dragons on them. I had several like Chinese 
flavored outfits back in the day when I was growing up in the 90s. And you're like, that's not how it was. Right. You just want to, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the fact is, like, they're not doing that with this new 90s craze. Like, they're completely glossing over it as if that wasn't a massive part of it, you know? Like, those little Chinese outfits were so big in the right. 90s, and it's weird to not have that come back with the resurgence of 90s style. Yeah. You know? Oh, I have one more follow-up. Do you remember... Okay, A, our conversation about local bands and how you love them, and I'm like, meh. <laughs> yeah? I, I want to hear them when they have a major record deal. Right. Uh, so that point. And then you mentioned a song that you loved, I'm Peanut Butter and You Are Jelly. Uh-huh. And we're so happy on this little piece of bread. Yeah. I looked into that. Which isn't local. I never claimed it was. Hang on. Is it? It is. <gasps> what? Ish. Okay. Okay. Rexford? There, th no, Salt Lake. Mm. There was an acapella. Ah, the third capital of Idaho Falls. Yes. Of Idaho, I mean. Yes, if you're unfamiliar <laughs> with the capitals of Idaho Falls, I'm holding up the L on my forehead <laughs> where it belongs. And there is Spokane, Washington, Boise, and Salt Lake City. Those are the three capitals of Idaho. Right. So <clears throat> there was an acapella, I believe all boys group, mm -hmm. called Inside Out. Uh-huh. About 98 to 2018. Funny. So a good 20-year stretch there. All right. And they're the ones who did that song. Oh, cute. And the reason I know them so well is back when I programmed The Sounds of the Sabbath or whatever it was. Uh-huh. The <laughs> uh, so, so I may be a heathen, but I know more about contemporary LDS music <laughs> than most of my LDS friends. Oh, yeah. Because I programmed it for so long. Mm -hmm. Inside Out. Okay. They had seven albums. Uh, they did a great version of I Feel My Savior's Love. Mm -hmm. You know that one. I'm mm -hmm. Trying to Be Like Jesus. And of course, the classic I Am a Child of God. Oh, yeah. Now, um, Protestant non-LDS people will be like, what are those songs? But those are, those are there's what, 300 songs in the LDS hymn book? Something like oh. that? A ton. And it depends on which one, because there's the regular hymn book, and then there's the primary hymn book. Yes, which is a lot of Janice Cap Perry stuff. So yeah, in a way, it's a local band <laughs> that I also happen to love. Hilarious. I need to get more into Inside Out. I guess so. They were great for a minute there. Yeah. Well, and honestly, <laughs> that song, I maybe heard it like five times when I was a kid, Tops. And I still remember it to this day because it was cute and it was funny. It's a cute little song. And it's catchy. I have a little issue with uh, one of the lyrics about... Um, oh, is it about his stint with Honey? Oh, no, but that was the top <laughs> YouTube comment. Funny. Is that in the song? It is. Okay. Yeah. I, because the top YouTube comment was, I bet Peanut Butter says that to Honey, too. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like that, yeah. But he talks about how jelly is low fat. Yes. And how because he's peanut butter, he's working on that. Close enough. And, and I thought, listen, damn it. Listen, American public. I just want to throttle people who perpetuate the myth that fat is the enemy and not sugar. Right. It's sugar. We yes. have 50% of Americans are now pre diabetic or obese or something or headed that way. I forget mm -hmm. the stat I heard today. But. Too many. Sugar and is it's the in enemy. Everything. And everything if something, is so sweet. And if something says low fat, it's probably high sugar. Right. If it tastes good. Right. <laughs> Still a cute song. Very. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called I'm Peanut Butter and You Are Jelly. Or some or peanut butter and jelly, probably. I don't know. But it's by Inside Out, mm -hmm. a local or regional <laughs> act from Salt Lake City that was hot from ninety eight to eighteen. So this seems like a great time to segue to one of my favorite kinds of sugar. I here I am talking about both sides of my mouth. I, but I, I, as much as I know that sugar is poison, I, it's sweet, sweet poison. You've had a bit of a sweet tooth lately too. Girl Scout cookies are coming already, oh, which I'm so excited for. By the way, and I wanted to mention because I had so and I think I've already mentioned this episode I did live in Milwaukee don't hold it against me <laughs> for 3 years and um when I was there Samoas were called something different they were called caramel delights mm -hmm. and what else the um PB patties the chocolate covered peanut butter cookies 
we know them as tagalongs, but they were called right. PB patties. And then the dosi dos Which doesn't sound as good. I think tagalong sounds fun. Which is my third. Dosi dos are my third favorite. Yeah. Oh, after so Samoas and Thin Mints. Mm-hmm. They're called PB sandwiches. Why? Oh, yeah, that's dumb. Maybe you've already heard this, but but if you've never been out of the state of Idaho, you might find this interesting. There's two different main bakers for Girl Scout cookies. There's oh, ABC, really? Yeah, there's ABC Bakers. They're the mm-hmm. oldest. And in fact, look at the map here. Green is Little Brownie Bakers, and that's mm-hmm. Idaho. Oh, so we have the newcomers. Orange or yellow, yeah, whatever color that is that's not green on this map, is... ABC Bakers. I want to compare to see if the bakers taste different. And even, okay, and, and yeah, they have a comparison between, we'll, we'll put this up on the screen. So the ABC Bakers Thin Mints are crunchier with more mint than chocolate. Really? And the Little Brownie Bakers, the Thin Mints we know and love, are richer, smoother chocolate coating, distinct peppermint taste. Hmm. Okay, and also you'd think that they'd have a more like uniform recipe you would think right you would think there'd be one recipe and both bakers honor the same recipe but no in fact there's a difference between caramel delights and samoas really caramel delights have more cookie than caramel oh well that's a shame milkier chocolate cookie has vanilla flavor with samoas heavier caramel layer darker chocolate coating more toasted coconut which i love i me too. I think that Little Brownie Bakers is superior to ABC Bakers. That's what I would I mean, say. As somebody I'm who's tried, so. yeah, yeah, somebody who's tried both. But you'd think that would be something to fix, right? One would think, yeah. especially because like everyone loves Girl Scout cookies, well, no matter now, where you are in the nation. Right. It's not like this. This isn't Iowa in the 1950s. Right. You know, this is a global market now, and you should be able to get what you want. Where Anywhere, any time. Exactly. Well, and especially because now you're going to have people dealing with the FOMO of knowing that they can't have what someone else can have right. in the same nation as them. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Just because, in fact, if you, again, referring to the map, Nevada, so Idaho and Utah are both little brownie bakers, but Nevada, right under Idaho, mm-hmm. is an ABC bakers territory. Okay. Along well, with hey, maybe a lot next of time we go to Vegas. Central <laughs> California. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a trip to Jackpot. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> do, you, do you think they have Girl Scouts in Jackpot? Oh, I hope in not. In front of a casino? <laughs> I really hope not. You ever not. been to Jackpot? No, I haven't. It sounds really depressing. It was depressing. So rather than stay at a casino or resort or whatever they've got there, I went to this really depressing dive bar and I won a ton of money. <laughs> oh, honestly, that's kind of nice. I thought if this Could is going to be gonna, worse. <laughs> yeah, if this is going to be depressing, let's go all the way. Right. Let's not pretend. Let's not put on airs. Let's not yeah. believe that this is something it's not. You basically did the equivalent of when you're feeling sad, going to a mirror and watching yourself cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wallowed in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wallowed in my own <laughs> filth. There's a cigarette smoker next to me going, you in anything yet? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I have to assume that your odds would be better in Jackpot, though, because there are fewer people playing. Yeah, but they tighten the slots. You know how they do. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, what's the famous quote? Vegas is for people who are bad at math. Right. You know, when you see signs that are yelling out, 99% payoff. Mm-hmm. It still means you're going to lose money. <laughs> right. If I put in a dollar. You're getting 99 the, cents. The best I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is why I, when I do go to any place in Nevada, Wendover, if you live in Salt Lake, Jackpot, if you live in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, Pocatello, mm-hmm. American Falls, um, or Vegas, the mm-hmm. big one, home of Super Bowl 58. Yeah. Um, I always, you know, I always, whatever I take out of the ATM, I go, this is my entertainment budget. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to kill some time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ne- you wave never goodbye to more it more than you can lose. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. You wave goodbye to it the minute you see it come out of your bank balance. Right. You know that reminds me of when we went to um, Fort Hall last. So we don't yeah. go to the Fort Hall Casino. I've actually only been in there once, and it was for a 
uh, George Lopez show. Okay. Yeah, I've never actually gambled there, so they we do, should the do Shoshone that The Shoshone Bannock Hotel and Event Center has some pretty- Yeah, it's pretty good. Decent events. Right. Yeah. But we went to that weird little gas station that has a little casino in it it's, instead. Yeah, it's just, it's the southernmost Blackfoot exit. Right. But Travel stop. Um, I remember that I was, I had like a hundred bucks to gamble with, and uh, <laughs> I had gambled it down quite a bit, and then I switched over to a, a Black a uh, blackjack machine or something something like that and i won it all back and then like icarus i flew too close to the sun <laughs> and i was like oh well if i'm winning it all back clearly i can win more and then i lost it all yeah i was so bummed <laughs> it's so funny what that max bet button can do <laughs> right well and i really did try to play conservative but i was like okay i can't hit that button every time or else they're gonna know that i'm a chump so i gotta do i gotta like switch it around a little <laughs> Yeah, it was dumb. <laughs> and I love the gimmicky machines. I used to love Wheel of Fortune. Right. Because, you know, you just sit there mindlessly hitting <laughs> max bet, max bet, max bet. Uh-huh. And then every once in a while, you'd get to spin the wheel. Uh-huh. And that was just a thrill. Yeah. It was a little mini adrenaline rush every time. It's almost like they're trying to create dopa- dopamine in your brain so that you'll spend more money. Right. It's yeah. worse than social media. <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. Especially if you play, if you're high rolling yeah. and you put a if put a hundred in the dollar slot machine, mm-hmm. three bucks every time. So oh, what's a hundred divided with? So you get thirty. Yeah, about thirty plays, thirty three plays. Yeah. yeah, but when you spin the wheel, whatever number you see is the dollar amount. It's not you don't have to do the quarters mm-hmm. math. Right. So if you hit a thousand, and I did once, it was a bachelor party. I think. What's up, <sighs> JJ? Is that honey Lucky. in your goatee? <laughs> um, oh, in fact, it's his birthday soon. Oh, nice. Anyway, <laughs> you've met JJ. Of course, yeah. We yeah. went and hung out with them in Yakima. Yeah. And um, and I'm so proud of you, buddy, for beating cancer. Yes. These kids are so cute. So cute. So cute. So, <laughs> But yeah, you know, you hit that thousand, you're like, $1,000. If these were dollars, I'd be rich. Wait a minute. They are dollars. <laughs> right. Boy, I hope nobody with a gambling problem who made a New Year's resolution, <laughs> is listening to this right now. I know. We're so bad. All right. We're just temptresses. Right. <laughs> the both of us. Oh, and while we're at it, more sugar. Valentine's Day was great, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> okay. So you know how goth chicks get so stoked for Halloween because now all of the things that are on the market will fit their aesthetic? Their aesthetic is normalized temporarily. Right. Like they can in buy the spirit of the season. They can buy all of their living room decorations for all year round uh-huh. and all of their clothes for all year round. Okay. You get the the point though, right? Yes. So that's me around this time of year. Valentine's <laughs> and Easter. Right. You've got the hold up your um my very, very pink cup. Yes. Yes. That's Carly's aesthetic right there. This it's, is my color. It's between Dusty rose and a pastel pink, right? I call it ballerina slipper pink. Okay. Yes. I mm-hmm. can picture it in my mind. Right? Yeah. So anyway, all of the things in my house are pink and it's hard to find good pink decorations, you know, and I specifically love pink roses and shockingly, those are really abundant around this time of year. So yeah, having a specific time of year when my aesthetic is the you know, native decoration <laughs> is kind of nice. In case you're new here, Carly had a pink Christmas tree. So that's I did. that's how pink. She's got a pink couch. Mm-hmm. I got pink chairs. My bedding is pink. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of pink going on in there. Mm-hmm. And this is the perfect time of year for that. It is. And I saw a lot more white chocolate this year. Oh, not just any white chocolate. White chocolate strawberry flavored yes. chocolate. Yeah, well, not only those, the the lint balls. Oh, I love those. that. And you you briefly touched on them last episode, and I have uh-huh. to say, I'm a believer. They're amazing. They're so good. I even got some extra. Yes, because they're the best. <laughs> yeah, they're but, just good. But there was cookie and cream something or other. There uh-huh. were strawberry and cream M and M's this year, which were so good. The Reese's Hearts that were oh, white chocolate. I love those. I really want to find some of the pink ones that look like ball sacks. <laughs> what? I haven't seen these. Okay, I keep seeing them on the internet. I don't they're know Reese's? how abundant they are. Yes, they're Reese's. <laughs> uh, they're Reese's peanut butter Valentine's hearts. But some of them, they did a limited <laughs> edition pink run. But if you turn those pink hearts upside down, they kind of look like ball sacks. <laughs> and I want them so bad. <laughs> do, they, 
Do they have little veins in them? <laughs> they kind of do. <laughs> I mean, chocolate in general just kind of creates veins. Like the Snickers vein? <laughs> yes, just like the Snickers vein. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny. We went. We actually went shopping on February 15th. Yes. And by the way, shout out to all the hotel maids on February 15th. I oh, wouldn't want that job. So sorry. We went shopping, though, because Valentine's Day really is half price candy eve. Yes. And it was only dark chocolate left. Yeah. That we it was were such able to bummer. find it. was just yeah. the dark chocolate. You know what? I got to go to Joanne. So, and not only that, they had no decorations, but thankfully I got to go to Joanne's tomorrow anyway. So I'm going to look for their decorations because right. their decorations rock anyway. Get it. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe I'll come <laughs> home with like four wreaths. And then the day after, I'm like, I'm feeling Eros tonight. Where do we go? <laughs> right. You know, Tom's, Eros, and Burgers gone in both Idaho Falls and Pocatello. What a shame, by the way. So where do you go? Firehouse, I know, has the Eros salad, which is okay. Not the same. Um, but then I remembered your brother uh -huh. <laughs> mentioned that Shaka's not only has uh, Eros, mm -hmm. but a beverage we've talked about on the show before. So go find the old episode if you're curious about Iron Port. Uh -huh. They've got it right there in their soda machine. Here's a shot. Iron Port is a beverage that was exclusively available mm -hmm. here in Salt Lake, basically. Yeah. A few surrounding bedroom communities. I think maybe one in Phoenix, one in Nevada somewhere. I think in Washington a little too, right? Maybe a little in Washington yeah. State. You can still get the syrup from the distributor in Logan. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Shaka's adjust your mix a little bit. Needs a little more. A little more syrup. Syrup in there. Which I had But it to... was so cool to have an Eero. Yeah. And some iron pork. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> Honestly, like, well, and we sat in your car and ate it yeah. <laughs> over the container like a couple of rats, and it was great. Yeah. You know? Dinner on the road. Yeah. I think my one note <laughs> that I would say for the Shack of Chevron Euros is that they need to cut their tomatoes and their cucumbers a little thinner and then yes. have more of them. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. everything on that euro is pretty thick. And also a little more tzatziki sauce would be nice. A little more tzatziki and go all the way up the pita. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because I was That's having it. to kind of bite both places to get the right <laughs> mix in the mouth. <laughs> right. Right. But other than that, realistically, considering how few options there are to get a euro around here, not bad. And you might be wondering, where's the Shaka's place? It's... um. It's where Highway 20 meets Bell and Road and becomes mm -hmm. Grandview for like a block. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. if you're going to say the Idaho it, Falls Airport. Yeah, I was going to say it's right by the airport. In fact, uh, it, adjacent to Shaka's or in the same building or whatever is the Salt Lake mm -hmm. Express drop off and pick up location. Right. Oh, and did I see somebody posted that somebody, they went to a Valentine's dinner at Stockman's. Because they did make plans for Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, we really should have done something. No. Oh, well, you Oopsies. know what? We'll do something next week. I guess somebody paid for their dinner, which was, isn't, oh. isn't that cool? Wow. We live in a town like that. That's really nice. Somebody with uh, deep pockets saw a mm -hmm. little couple having a nice little Valentine's dinner and said, hey, I want to pay for them. That's really nice. And did actually. they do it for two or three other tables? I don't know. But I kind of want to know. Did they look for the people who were the most in love or the people who were fighting? Right. That's kind of what I want to know. How does somebody determine who gets their dinner paid right? for? You know, honestly, that's the way to do it. Like if I went out and I was having a great Valentine's and I had some extra money to just blow, I would look for the like most disconnected, upset looking couple in the joint. <laughs> yeah. And pay for theirs. Yeah. Because then they have nothing else to fight about the rest of the night. I just saw a you know? reel with Shaq and I guess he goes to Walmart fairly routinely. I mean, everyone goes to Walmart, even Shaq. And looks for those mothers with the kids that are eyeing the expensive shoes. Oh, that's cute. Just hooks them up. Well, especially because he does that a lot. Well, and especially because I'm sure that he had a really hard time buying shoes when he was a kid. Yeah. I think I remember even reading that he like, his mom had to special order his shoes and they were really expensive, so he couldn't get them very often or something. Yeah, was he size 15? I don't know Shaq's shoe size. He's but... got some massive feet. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Yeah. I know that if I really wanted to, I could sleep in his shoe. It'd be yeah. fine. Like, if I ever became homeless, he could just donate a shoe to me and I'd, I'd be okay. You could be the old lady that lives in <laughs> Shaq's shoe. I could. <laughs> <laughs> or in one of the potholes right? here yes. in Idaho Falls. I can't believe it's already pothole season. They haven't even finished filling in the the last ones. Yeah. Another thing I saw in a group was somebody asking who has the best pho in town. Oh, really? And we know that in Pocatello, we've already awarded pho King Tasty. Oh, they're so good. 
with IFAF one week. I literally turned to you summer. yesterday and said, man, we really need to go back to Pho King Tasty. You did? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of, so good. It's one of those places you crave. Yeah. And those are, I don't want to say few and far between, but mm -hmm. close. Right. But they were a good value. The service was good. The people were nice. You know, and the food was just incredible. So in Idaho Falls, my favorite is D Kitchen. Mm -hmm. They just, and if you get it to go, man, they do a great job. They do. Nothing has ever leaked from D Kitchen ever. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I don't know what kind of procedural manual they have there, but it's working, guys. Yeah. Now, you know, that being said, you and I have never been to Hot Springs Pho yet. No, we have not. Yeah. So we need to try that. You know what? Next time we're craving a new restaurant, that's where we're going. Okay, deal. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to try new places. Yeah. Even if it's a gas station and we eat the yeah. heroes on the road. <laughs> But we do. It's kind of nice. Yeah, we like it. It's culinary it's adventures. Yeah. There's not a lot going on in our life. So right. yeah. you gotta make you gotta find fun where you can find it. Uh, one other thing I've started doing is um if you're okay, I had a fairly impactful experience in my life related to real estate a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. I was helping a guy sell his home that his, I don't know, 95-year-old dad mm -hmm. was leaving to go into an assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. And he was, I, I happened to come to the place. He invited me over when they were doing a bunch of cleaning out mm. and there was the entire kitchen table was full of those big bottles of Bragg's apple cider vinegar, vinegar, oh. you know, the ACV I do. that the health uh -huh. nuts talked about. Right. And the son was just sort of, you know, holding his head and, Going, I yeah, Dad hoarded this stuff. He had a bottle in every room, and then some, obviously. <laughs> and the kitchen table was like, "Are we sure all of those bottles were full of vinegar?" I mean, uh, most of them were sealed. Okay. Like, and the guy wasn't a hoarder, but he hoarded this stuff. Okay. And I started thinking, wait a minute here. Like, a bunch of dots started connecting in my head. <laughs> yeah. I know that vinegar lowers the glycemic index of anything you put it on. Right. And the more you stay on the low end of the glycemic index, the healthier you are and feel. Mm -hmm. And I eat a lot of, you know, red meat, mm -hmm. carbs, even <laughs> though I don't want to admit it, sugar. Yeah. And so I made my New Year's resolution without quite realizing it. I don't think I decided on, you know, December 31st right. what it was going to be. But one thing that I've been pretty disciplined this year is having a little shot of ACV a day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And so what I've learned is, you know, how a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Uh -huh. If you just put it in a shot glass and slam it, like for three hours afterwards, you're like, oh, my throat hurts. And... Like you're you're burping up like concentrated vinegar stuff. Yeah. And so what I've started doing, and I defy you. Well, I'll tell you the difference between this is an, and a kombucha. What I've started doing is, you know, a little shot of ACV, mm -hmm. and then a full on full can of Lacroix or Polar or mm -hmm. whatever flavored water you're into this week. Nice. Uh huh. And that's what's so cool is you can make. You've already bought the Lacroix. Mm -hmm flavor that you love <laughs> right right you know well, uh, and all of them pair well with it yeah because you've made me a couple of these little cocktails and they all yeah they whether all it's the taste good polar orange cream or mm -hmm. the polar they've got a new ginger lime flavor that's ginger mule i thought ginger lime mule oh nice yes. hot and or just a Lacroix tangerine or or pomplamoose or whatever yeah um it tastes exactly like a kombucha it tastes good so that's what i'm into this year mm -hmm. is, and I guess the only difference is kombucha has tea in it. Oh. And this is just ACV and flavored sparkling water. I could see that. But if you're trying to figure out a way to put more ACV in your life, I've discovered a fabulous way to do it. And I hope you do too. Give it a try. And it's really refreshing. <laughs> I like it. So the reason I brought up pho in the first place uh -huh. <laughs> was one guy replied, you know how some people just can't let you have nice things? Oh, yeah. This guy, and I'm going to call him out, Gary, whoever you are, <laughs> said, so the question was- well, He's named after a snail, so- <laughs> who, who has the best pho in town? <laughs> and Gary replied, do you guys even speak English? What the hell is pho? And I thought- Gary, you're already on the internet. <laughs> yeah, you could Google, you could take exactly what you just typed as a comment and put it in Google instead, 
and find out. Right. And maybe, you know, expand your horizons. But isn't it interesting that there are some old people who like to define themselves by what they, what, don't know? Yeah. Don't like? Mm -hmm. Refuse to learn. Exactly. I'm That's proud it. of the fact that I refused to learn, even though Idaho Falls has a surprising number of ethnic restaurants right. for such a white bread and community. good ones, by the way. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because they tone it. I don't know if they tone it down for us whiteies, and that's why we like them. Maybe, or if that's just how the food's supposed to be, and it's just good. <laughs> I'm guessing it's because they tone it down for us whiteies, but still. Gary, do better. Gary, you're already on the internet. Just Google it. And I know you won't, buddy. I know you won't, mm -hmm. because there's some sort of pride in being set in your ways, and you've learned all the things that you have to learn, and it's not possible that anything else that you don't know about could be good and improve your life. I feel sorry for you, you but know, not really. The funny thing is, if he hears this, he's, he's going to be like... He's not! <laughs> What's a podcast? Right. What the hell is that? <laughs> but if he does hear this... It ain't on the radio? It's not on the TV? <laughs> I got to look at my Facebook or the YouTubes for this? <laughs> but if he does hear this and he hears my comment about like, Oh, he's named after a snail, so clearly he's upset, okay? <laughs> he's, he's not going gonna to like, get the SpongeBob reference. Exactly! He's going to be like, I'm not named after a snail, when he could just look up Gary Snail, and it would pop right up. Yeah. yeah. Was that too Sorry mean? for you. You know what? No! He's mean. <laughs> I don't want to fight mean with mean. He's mean for wasting our time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Gary, but you're kind of a silly goose. Type it into a fancy Google machine next time, instead of being just a... Ignorant dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a goose of the silly variety. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe yeah. we should. Yes. Let's use um, kind insults. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> well, was honestly, good. Honestly, that's just one of my favorite ones. Yeah. One thing that I saw the first time this week, and I can't believe I haven't seen it before because it's been going on for three years, and it's an old radio buddy, JT, Jeremy Taylor. He's in the morning on 100.7 My FM. He presented a check for like 1500 bucks. Oh, whoa. To pay down some school lunch debt. Oh, that's really nice. So I reached out to him. And he said, yeah, I've been doing this since the pandemic. I'm kind of shocked that it required that much, but man. Well, okay. So, so far he's donated $8,000. Wow. And some of it's his own money. Some of it's money that comes from people like you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you can donate to the cause at 100myfm.com. Uh, yeah, $8,000, I guess, is equal to, say, 2,600 school lunches. Wow. Well, yeah, that sounds about right. They Something like that. I mean, they keep it cheap. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But uh, what a great thing he's doing. And just wanted to mention it in case you want to contribute. Mm -hmm. He only takes donations through Venmo, as I understand it, oh, yeah. because they don't charge a fee. That's smart. Like, say, GoFundMe or some right. of the other charity collection mm -hmm. sites. And so the Venmo link, again, is at 100myfm.com. What a cool thing. Yeah, I'm so glad someone's doing that because I remember being a kid and, like, either watching my friends or being the kid who, like, your parents hadn't had a chance to, like, call the school and pay it or something. And so you get, like, this stamp on your hand. I got that when I was saying, a kid. Saying, like, yep. hey, pay, like, hey, mom and dad, you need to pay us, <laughs> you know? And, like, I actually even had one day when, like, they kept forgetting to pay or, like, they were just busy. My parents worked a lot when I was a kid. And I ended up having to, like, not get a lunch. Oof. Like, I got the, like, crappy little sandwich lunch one day that was, like... The PB and J, and like that's it. The perfunctory lunch. Yeah, the we're <laughs> legally obligated to give you this lunch. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. and it was oh. it was just like embarrassing. It was sad. It was like it tasted like crap. <laughs> yeah, you know. And so it's nice that someone's making sure that that doesn't happen to kids because realistically, it should never happen to kids. You know, it it shouldn't. No kid should have to go hungry. Especially around here in our community. Right. So mad props. Jeremy Taylor, the school lunch program. Again, all the details. Oh, and you get a tumbler if you oh. donate $25 or more. I love a good tumbler. Um, to the project. Do I have that right? A blender brand shaker cup. Ooh, nice. Oh, the blender bottles. That's oh, how you make nice. those protein shakes at the mm -hmm. gym. Yeah. Those on are the, really good. On the go. 
Yeah. Then you can send that with your kid with some protein powder so that if you forget to pay their lunches, they have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> or or the thing I use blender bottles for yes. is raw eggs. Right. You crack some raw eggs in there, shake that up, mm-hmm. and boom, right now into the panda nice scramble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. When or I eat saw them you... raw Napoleon Dynamite style. <laughs> when I saw you do that the first time, I was like... I'm sorry. Why have you not gotten a Nobel Prize yet? Because that is genius. I'm so 3008. (laughs) (laughs) Another, okay. Another thing we're excited for, we're recording this before going to it, but just want to mention it. Well, we wanted to make sure our weekend was open so we could really enjoy it. It comes around every year. It's the Ermac Red Dress Concert. Mm -hmm. Now, in case you're wondering why there's so much extra cleavage right now. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the edit beep, which means uh, we're recording this. At a, we recorded most of the show before going to the Red Dress concert. Uh-huh. And now this is directly after. Yeah. So we thought we'd pop back on and say what a good time we had. Certainly, uh, you look lovely. You Thank rocked. You. you understood the assignment. Well, you know, I'm never going to the Met Gala, so I figured... Let's treat this as if I am. Yeah. Well, and also, you know how much I love some theatrics and costuming, so anytime I can throw together a fun little outfit for, you know, some ditty, of course I'm gonna. So this was the Ermac Red Dress concert with Cirque de Symphony, Mm -hmm. and it was five different performers who all did just fantastic moves. Right. And they did exactly what you said they were going to do. They did the the hoop Mm -hmm. that was hanging. The lira. They did the hoop that was on the ground. Uh huh. The sear. And then they did the silks. Uh huh. And they Good did job. a duet with a man and a woman. Which I totally had a feeling they would. And I'm actually pretty positive that I've seen that same man and woman perform before, at least the guy. He looked really familiar, and there's something about his style that's pretty unmistakable. Did you recognize his abs? I was actually looking <laughs> more at, at, his tra- at his traps. Yeah. Those, okay, here's the thing. People don't really think much about those, but that's the muscle that you develop if you're doing acrobatic. I just want to say that uh, IF Symphony, what's up in their 74th season now? Right. They've gotten better. Way better. Last time I saw them was like five years ago, and Mm -hmm. they did Beethoven's Ninth, which is tough anyway. It is. It is. Especially the final choral movement. Right. Ode to Joy. But... um, there are a few sour notes that I remember. Right. And they just nailed it tonight. And and they did they some were challenging crisp. Rimsky, Korsakov mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They did like circusy type music. Mm-hmm. They so did. It was kind of like including a, the Harry Potter theme, by the way. Yeah. Which was so fun. It was like a pops concert, which I love. You know I love when, mm-hmm. when you play the hits. Right. They had these great little Macrons. I wish I would have kept the box. I don't remember you who did it. You and your Macrons. I, I love me a Macron. <laughs> and I love that they're finally getting real fancy with this, just the way I like it. So anyway, we had a great time at the Not Quite Enough Room for Your Knees <laughs> Theater Center for the Performing <laughs> Arts. <laughs> Yeah, you know how hard my dad fought? No, it's fine. It's great. And we had great seats, too, this time Mm -hmm. in the balcony. Which is really the best place to watch any acro show, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely agreed. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Ermac. Thank you, uh, Idaho Falls Symphony conductor Thomas Heuser. Mm -hmm. It's been a minute since we've talked, but uh, he's a great guy. Right. And he did a great job tonight, and so did the entire symphony. He did. He was really fun. (laughs) I liked the part when he uh, joined in with the acrobats. I thought that that was just a hoot and a holler. Yeah, they did a little bit together. Yeah. And on the note of thanking, thanks, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, thanks for the tickets. (laughs) So, Ermac Red Dress Concert comes around in February every year. You are IFAF this week. Crisp Mm -hmm. high five. Whoosh. 21 finger gun salute pew, pew. and <laughs> chef's kiss to you. to you and all the ladies wearing the red dresses tonight. Right. Well, any dresses. We went to Smoke and Fins right before and we saw so many people in red dresses <laughs> and I was like, clearly we found the hot spot tonight. Right. I feel like, yeah, yeah. half the uh, half the people inside Smoke and Fins were wearing red dresses. Right. This dress reminds me so much of the one that Sarah wears in the labyrinth during the masquerade scene with David Bowie. God. Damn, that <laughs> that scene. As a kid, like that was what I wanted every that's what I wanted every single party to be like as an adult. And then I became an adult and I was like, oh, this sucks. You know, Carly, <laughs> you remind me of the babe. Oh, the babe with the power? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I back to you. our regularly scheduled show. 
So obviously, based on the title, you're supposed to wear a red dress. Yes. Um, now, I have a couple, but like I mentioned before, instead of altering my clothes, I've altered my size to fit my old clothes. <laughs> so they don't fit right now, which is fine. It happens. But I didn't have any time to go to any of the shops in town. And if I'm being totally honest, my funds have been a little limited because I've had other things that have been more important. And so- Christmas. Right. Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Obviously. President's Day yeah. today. Well, and not only that, just normal life stuff like- <laughs> Super Bowl. Vet bills. Yeah. 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 All the fun stuff. Rango breaking his dick. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's right here. He's <laughs> wagging his little tail as we talk about it. <laughs> just last night, I opened my closet. He pulled his little girlfriend out as fast as he could. I let her I let her hang out for a little bit until he was done. <laughs> I, I dog sat him for a couple of days. Uh-huh. And I sensed that he was, I don't know how, maybe it's a boy thing. I could recognize it. I sensed he was- He had a little he, bit of blue balls? He was looking around for something to hump. <laughs> Thank goodness I don't have anything in my place that fits that description. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's really missed his girlfriend because before when I'd opened my closet, I would only have to worry about my cats running in so they could burrow in like those little dark corners and be cats like they do. Uh -huh. um, but now I have to worry about him running in to jailbreak his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you say girlfriend, you mean? It's a, it's a plush that I have that looks like a teddy bear, but it's actually a dog. That I've had, he's had since he was a puppy. Okay. And it's always been his like go to sort of lady friend. Did did he just get clipped too late or what's yeah, the deal? Yeah, he got, he got clipped a little late. Okay. Like maybe two, three weeks too late. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, let him up. Okay. Hey. Uh, we'll show you Rango if, if well, you're. Especially because we were, we were just talking about his dick. You should get to see his face. <laughs> he's so cute. He's baby. <laughs> this is Rango. He, he, um, he's a total asshole. I'm not going to lie. Which I love about him. Like statistically, chihuahuas are mm -hmm. uh, obnoxiously loud alarm systems and most likely to get into a fight with other dogs at a doggy daycare center. <laughs> but his coloring really is beautiful. He's a pretty boy. But he does have those bug eyes. <laughs> I think he's handsome. <laughs> those are the eyes that look... When I was shivering and shaking and sweaty from the man flu mm -hmm. a few weeks ago... And he was sitting next to me looking up at me going, are you okay? It was just like, you're not helping. But yeah, there he is. Well, and when we first started filming this podcast in some of the lost episodes. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, you'd he have him up. Always was in my arms because he didn't know what to do with himself if mommy wasn't holding him. And he's gotten so much better since. He has. Yeah. Well, mm. let's end with this. <laughs> this is... um. <laughs> It's kind of funny. There used to be a place in town, Golden China. It's right at the X intersection by Fred Meyer and that McDonald's and oh. Pockets. It's the Yellowstone oh, Highway yeah. meets- I know the one, yes. Uh -huh. Is it called Presto Avenue for a minute there or something? Anyway. I don't know. Somebody asked, hey, uh, uh, it looks like uh, the windows are boarded up and it's being shot at. Like, I, I, I swear I saw some bullet holes or something. What? And the IFFD stepped in and commented, oh, yeah, that's us. The uh, uh, Yeah, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah, 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 because they'll do drills in old abandoned buildings. Yes. Yeah. And so if owners are amenable to the idea. And it's going to be demolished anyway. And they're going to demolish the building anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. they use that as sort of a training ground. I thought yeah. that was kind of cool. Call the IFFD and say, light it up. All <laughs> right. <laughs> go <Honestly>. to town. <laughs> hey, if there's enough methane in there, it'll go, you know? <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> and that's our show. Thanks so much for listening. Have and a great week. Ending on a fart joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't end on a fart joke. What can we end on? Um, Rango's sweet little baby face as he's resting here like mm -hmm. a little angel. Little angel chair, baby. I love him. Sometimes I call him Mr. Penis because I spent so much money on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you call him Bean. Yeah. Why do you call him Bean? Because so I I started by calling him uh, Beanie Baby because mm -hmm. one time he looked at me and he looked like a, be a Beanie Baby so oh, I was like oh you little it... Beanie Baby and then it turned to Beanie Weenie and then Bean and then Mr Bean and then Mr Peen and then Mr Penis. 
Well, but you sometimes do the penis and the penis. Yes. <laughs> sometimes I call him Mr. Penis Penis. Yeah. Actually, That's I his think, full name. I think it started as Mr. Penis Penis, and then I went to Mr. Penis. <laughs> when Carly's angry with him and uses his full name. That's yeah. what she, Mr. Penis Penis. <laughs> Rango what Mariachi have you done? Venus Penis. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps getting longer. <laughs> Have a great week. Please like, subscribe, tell a friend, share. I love that instead of a fart joke, we ended on a dick joke. Why can't we keep it together <laughs> until the after the end of an episode? <laughs> the world will never know. 